Hello everyone and welcome to Wizzo Talk. Well, why Wizzo Talk? Because I want to know, don't you? Here at Wizzo Talk, I play like you said, uncut and unedited. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on all the hot topics that to come. Like to be a guest on the show? Hit me up in the comments. You have a hot topic you'd like to hear discussed? Also, hit me up in the comments. Always remember that it is free, absolutely free, to like, share, and subscribe. You can also find me on Spotify and what's that other one? TikTok. TikTok. Instagram. <laughs> Instagram, yeah. yeah. And uh, so then we're going to meet our guests and then we're going to come on back and we're going to bring you guys some fire. Hi, my name is John. I'm from Temple. Um, just want to say it's a privilege and a pleasure being here. And I want to thank Paul for being here, for letting me uh, be here. And uh, um, just a pleasure. And, we go back a long ways and a uh, long time and just want to say thank you. All right, all right, all right. That's what's up. You're welcome. You're welcome. Let's meet my, my shit. I'm going to start saying co-host instead of our guests. I'm just with you, man. It's an honor to be here always. Uh, more bliss, more light. This is your boy Seven Points of Bliss, a.k.a. Pomegranate Samurai. And uh, you guys can just check me out uh, at After Real Truth. You can Google it all one word. You can check me out on Spotify. I'm the Cosmic Currency 777. And um, like I said before, it's just uh, always a pleasure to be here on Wizzo Talks. All right. A pleasure to have both of you guys. Pleasure to have you. Just like a regular now, shit. That's what I'm talking about. So, guys, what we're going to do, we're going to come on now. And we're just about to bring you some of that fire. We're going to talk today's topic. We're talking about the school system that's the main topic and we may venture off of that and the way that topic came about is because my classmate here john hit me up one time and he said wizzo i'd like to come on wizzo talk and talk about the school system i said enough said we had a couple of days where we couldn't line up the schedule but we're here today that's right. so john it's on you tell them what you got on that school system well, I just want to say, you know, from a monetarily standpoint, that uh, the school system is, uh, is is hurting our kids and, and basically is, is hurting our, uh, I don't say economics, but it's really, it's, it's almost a waste of money. Um, and the reason why is because uh, uh, we spend a lot of money on, on positions and situations that are really not necessary. And... Um, it's not a. It's not. It's being unfair to the kids, and it's also being unfair to the teachers, and to the point that you're even having teachers that don't even want to come back to teach after two years. Um, we're losing our teachers. Um, you know, just that Temple where I went to school at, at Temple High. Each year, um, we're replacing 120 teachers a year. And some school districts are even more, and it's even trickling down to the um, to the small schools where they're even losing teachers. Because it used to be that when you went to a big school I mean, and you, you were and you didn't like it, you you always feel well. I can go to a small school mm -hmm. and, and do well because it's a small school. You know, it's a hick town. You know, whatever. But now you're starting to see that even the smaller schools are having teachers that are you know quitting and and, and uh, not wanting to come back. And and it's not a it, it's really not good. Um, because a, a teacher should, a teaching profession should be honored and very much should be respected because they are our leaders and, and they are, should be someone of a role model. I know some of my teachers and some of my coaches uh, today are still some of my role models, you know. Um, unfortunately, over the last three years or four years, I've seen some of my Best teachers pass away. And I think back at some of the things they taught me, and it wasn't just the X's and O's, it was also just how to present yourself and how to handle yourself in class. And not class, not the classroom, but just handle yourself in class with class. And, uh, but anyway, but uh, uh, unfortunately in, in today's time, we're, we're spending money on administration costs that's, uh, that's out of the roof. Uh, I mean, for instance, here's an example. This coming week, every one of us, well, if you got your house paid for, and and um, if you, or even if you got a, a, what do you call it, escrow, you're going to get property taxes, and most of your property taxes goes to schools, and unfortunately, 
what a lot of the monies that goes to the schools are going for administration costs. And administration is, is actually hurting our, our schools because back, Paul, when we went to school, it's been talked about many times on the radio that back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, when we went to school, there was only maybe one or two cars at the administration. Now you got a whole parking lot. Yeah. You got a whole parking lot full of cars. And it's like, well, what's these, what's these, what's these people here for? Well, head of curriculum of this, head of curriculum of that, assistant associate superintendent, assistant associate, uh, superintendent. Well, I got a question, and, and it's an honest question. What did the, what did those associate uh, superintendents and all those curriculum people do today? Um, how much of bang are we getting out of our bucks? You know, I mean, it's one thing to sit there and say, well, we need these, we need these positions, but do we really need them? Because somewhere down the line, these these positions uh, uh, that they're holding and also what they're presenting agenda-wise is putting a strain on our teachers because they got their hands tied or they have to teach according to uh, Common Core, C-Scope, and all that. Because you hear about teachers, I have to teach according to this test. Mm -hmm. And it's because they, they feel pressure instead of knowing the subjects. They have to, in teaching what they know, they have to teach what's according to the test. And, and that puts a lot of strain. And that a lot of teachers resent that. A lot of teachers are, are actually backing out on that and saying, no, I, if I got to teach according to a test, I'd rather not. And that's why studies have shown that after two years, what happens is that most people that go into teaching, after two years, they either resign or get out of teaching completely or they go into administration, which because they themselves become the problem. Because mm -hmm. they're hiding out is about what they're trying to do. And that's not good. And to, to create all these positions is, is actually, like I said, it's doing harms not only to the teachers, but also to the, to the students, because now you're basically hand-tying the teachers to what they can do and what they can't do. Right. And, and uh, basically, my proposal is that if, if, if you want to present all these programs and these agendas, that's fine. No, I'm not going too long. Oh, right. good. Go but, but if you're going to present these programs and these positions and these agendas, then you need to go out there and you need to teach and present them. And you, we need to see how you do with them. Because what you will find out is that these people that carry this administration title, carry this curriculum, uh, head of the curriculum, or whatever it is, they themselves can't do it, but they're doing it to keep a job. They themselves are doing it because they don't want to go into the classroom. They themselves don't want, and they won't tell you that. Some, some of them will. Some of them will, and they'll say, "Yeah." And I've had some of, "Yeah, I did it because I don't want to. I don't want to teach the class anymore. I hate teaching the class, you know." And then some of, them, "Oh no, no, no!" They'll, 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 they'll hide behind it, and oh, 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 you know, I'm, I'm all about the kids. You know, I love kids. And realistically, you say, "You're, you're a darn liar. You know, you, you're, you're not telling the truth because I know you. I've seen you teach. I know how you were, and you were, you didn't like it, and, and you hid from it. Right. And uh, but." Um, yeah, I just ask people that when they get their tax statement, their property taxes this week, that when they see how much they're paying and how much is going to the schools, how much bang are we getting out of our, out of our bucks when, when, you, when, you, when, you get, when you find out that is this all a waste of money? Because we're, we're not, you know, we can actually lower property taxes by cutting back on the schools which means cutting back on administration, which means going back to the old ways where actually schools were run locally and run by the, by the parents and, 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 the, and, the, and the teachers and, and uh, keeping it uh, simple. Because teaching should be a simple job. You're here to learn, you do, you do what you're supposed to do, and if you can't do it, then we know we'll you know, do it that way. But, but you're losing your teachers, bottom line, and, and, uh, and uh, and you got too much bureaucracy. Okay. Anyway, well, I'm, I'm just, sorry uh, for going as far as... No, 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 you sorry, go ahead because uh, <laughs> we, don't, we just keep on rolling. Don't need to apologize. I just want to touch on two things, and then if you don't mind, then I'm going to say something. So uh, I will say that um, 
I was at work one day and I had, uh, it was like a privilege and an honor that my first grade teacher walked by and I was able to meet her. You know, I couldn't believe it. She looked exactly the same. Recently? Yes. Wow. wow. That was a month ago. I'm in my late 50s, 57. First grade, and, huh? And that's a first grade teacher. That's a first grade teacher. Yes. Wow. She really must keep yes. herself up. And she was, she was looking time. good. And she said, Paul? <laughs> no, she was just, she, knew she was good. Yes. And um, then just to touch on the administration teaching a class. Now, I will say that I know Marlon put uh, their superintendent and his staff came out to start teaching and then they went to like 100% because he's now, I, he had some other issues when they didn't graduate, whatever. So now he was, or maybe is, so I don't know which one passed his present, was acting as the principal also and he was teaching math, I think. So he did come out and bring his student, bring his staff out to teach, and so he was at 100%. So that much I do know. And then the last thing is, kids, uh, uh, what they're taught now is way different from what we were taught. And I know it's got to change. I had to teach my kids how to how to sign their names. They don't know how to do this because I think now it's so much about this freaking test, you know, this star test, but. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a pin in that, but then I'm gonna let Josh go ahead and then see what you got on on this school system. Well, I just wanna first start by saying both of y'all had some great points y'all brought up. Um, I was raised more so in the school system. My mother was a teacher, and um, so just to put it out there from her perspective, because I heard a lot growing up as a child. Um, it's very hard for the teachers out here because they don't get paid what they feel like they should be getting paid. And, I, and that's not to say they're in it for the money, because my mother did it because it was a passion. She taught special ed and she taught um, every grade up came through high school. You know what I mean? So, right, right. And the thing about it, what I always hear her say was, you know what I'm saying, the funding was wonky, you know what I'm saying? But it made it kind of hard for the teachers to really have a living. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't pay them right. And just from my opinion and my perspective, um, teachers, they teach you the fundamental things, the basic principles of these things. They teach you history, they teach you how to read, they teach you arithmetic. And they teach you these things for a person to go out there and become an NBA player and to make all this money over a bill. And they taught them the and most important things. So it's like, even a teacher who's teaching kindergarten, they're teaching children the basic things, and that's, that child will go to be a lawyer and then out, you know what I'm saying, out make them when it comes to money. And that's kind of, I feel like that's very disrespectful for a person to have taught you the basis of everything. I feel like teachers really should get more um, pay, and I think they should get way more respect put on their names because they do a lot for our sure. communities. A lot of these teachers are very passionate about what they do. They put their heart in it. My mother, she used to use her own money, you know, to buy school supplies for students. She would like make food and she would take it to the kids who didn't have lunch and stuff like that. So it's still teachers out here like that today. Um, and as far as the school system, like what you guys were talking about, about the testing, everything is about the testing, but everything is also about the numbers. Our sure. school system isn't really designed to be about success, exactly. you know. When you all were in school, which is different, because it was the way it was different from when I was in school. When you all were in school, but from the England that I've got, just from listening to some of the elders and looking at the movies, and you know what I'm saying, you all have an education system built more so towards financial freedom. And when I say that, that they were giving you all actual skills that if you didn't go out and you didn't want to get a job, you were your own job. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I had touched on it before that school systems used to give you things like um, mentorships and stuff like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they would put you in the hands of a mechanic and they would let, allow them to teach you things and tricks of the trade and stuff like that. They don't skills. give you these things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's why I feel like apprenticeships are very important. They need to really bring that back to the school system. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind seeing so many uh, cars out there in the parking lots if they actually had people out there that were having mentorships and, you know what I'm saying, teaching these kids hand in, hands on. Because the school system really goes off of one teaching method and there's several different types of teaching methods to go off of. So it's not really aimed at the success of students as it is more so about pumping out numbers. That's right, it's all about numbers because uh you know, it, 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 that's why they, in today's time, it, it's basically virtually almost impossible to basically kick a kid out of school. And not that, you know, we're promoting that because we don't. 
But when a kid becomes so disrespectful to the teachers, to the schools, to the school system, to the school independent, or independent school district, that to the point that, you know, hey, you know, we just can't tolerate this. And even then, they're keeping them. And uh, because they want the numbers, it's about it's about the money. They need the money, the money, money, money. And I've had it. We can't kick them out because we need the money. We, yeah. we got more. We had a, a kid that had maybe seven seven records, you know, because of, and yet we're bringing him into school in your school system, in your school, in your classroom, and you know he's a trouble kid, he's a disturbed kid, and yet you're gonna have to teach him. Now I got to deal with him as well as 20 other kids, 25 other kids. And now he's going to bring my other 25 down. And it becomes a problem because it's all about the money. And, and, and Josh, I just want to say this, that I compliment your mom and I, I really uh, for being a school teacher because I know school teaching, if you do it right, it, it, it's a 25-hour day job. Yeah. It really is. And it's a 370, not 365, it's a 370 day uh, a year job. And and because uh, it, it does take a lot of time, energy, effort, money, um, uh, just time. You know, it's just, you know, and it's not, uh, but you do it because you love love the system. And, and I guess that's my, 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 really my point is that you're seeing a lot of the t younger teachers, they're burned out. Mm -hmm. they're, they're tired of being disrespected. Mm -hmm. and, and it ain't just me saying this. This was on the Dallas uh, 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 radio show and they were talking about this how, how, the, how the younger teachers are not not, uh, not coming back you know, they said we're, we're, we're tired of being disrespected. We're tired of, of having, you know, uh, somebody sitting behind the desk telling we got we got to take care of this kid. And that's a problem. And while they're sitting behind the desk, because it's all about the money. And 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 when you were talking about pay. Teachers need to get paid. But here's the deal: you can pay teachers more. But, but cut, cut back on administration costs because you don't, you don't need them. You, you don't need them. Well, I know. I know. They all sit there and say how important they are. Oh, yeah, we're, we're important. We're important. We're important. But, but they're not. They're not. They're not. They're lying to you. And like I said, they're hiding out. And, and, uh, as I, and I, I, meant, I was going to meant to say this uh, uh, later on, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. And I'll probably say it again, so you don't mind. But, uh, but what's the worst thing you can tell a school a super, uh, administrator? We'll put you back in the classroom. They're not going to go back in the classroom. They will, they're not going to go back. They will talk like they want to go back. And they will make you go out there and believe that they will, but they're not. And unfortunately, you know, we talk about pay. These younger teachers, they're finding out that they can go work at, where well, I work at, Walmart Distribution Center, or even uh, uh, FedEx. I'm just making out, you know, companies. And they can make just as much or more, and yet not have the stress of being called a name or, or uh, being called names or, or being just disrespected because. Uh, it's, it's not good. It's bad on, on, on their health, and, and it's bad on society, and it's also bad on uh, teaching the other good kids. Um, you know, that's not good, right. you know, because right. it carries over. Well, I will say this, that uh, I used to tell my kids back in the day that if you wanted to, uh, the teachers didn't start teaching for the money. Because back then they wouldn't get paid anything. Probably back when your mom was teaching and my teachers. Now here all of a sudden, I think, cost of maybe COVID or whatever, I don't know. They're paying a little bit more money or they're either trying to do that too. Because everywhere that I think of, I think is short of teachers. Yeah. And it's probably why. Because of the disrespect and not staying long, you know, and just getting tired of it or something like that. Well, well Paul, know? go back to when you were in middle school yeah, and, and, yeah, yeah. that's why yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. but, but you remember when you were going from let's say from sixth grade to seventh grade or from seventh grade to eighth grade yeah, how many teachers did you did you see you know i know when i went to bottom but between my sixth grade and seventh grade or my seventh grade to eighth grade I don't, we, we may only see maybe two maybe three different deep teachers you know now you, you go there and, you, and, and my neighbor who uh, used to be at Lamar, no longer at Lamar, he's not going, you know, I think he got out of teaching too, and he said, we got a whole new staff every year, because, you know, they're just, you know, and that's what I'm saying, a city like Temple, 120 teachers, new teachers, you know, for a school district, that tells you there's something wrong, if there's something, you know, and, and, and um, you know, it's not good. And like I said, it's trickling down to the small schools. Even even people are, are, are starting to wander out of the small schools. And um, 
that's that's sad. That's sad yeah. for the school districts. They really it's, just, it's really interesting how um, if you really pay attention to the school system and the prison systems, how so similar they are. Sure. They really aren't that much different, and that's really what people need to start looking at when you allow your children to go to these facilities, first school doesn't start at school, school starts at home. Sure. So in order to let these teachers be able to do their jobs, you first have to teach your children how to behave when they're home. And that goes back into one of the things we had talked about before, accountability with the parents. Yeah. They need to be doing their job first, and then the teachers are able to do their job and, and allow the kids to get the information that they, they need, but these schools haven't been treated like the type of facilities to nurture children anymore. It's in and out, you know what I'm saying, give them the information, can they repeat this information, can they regurgitate it, and if they can, then they pass, but that doesn't really show any type of mark of true intellect, Sure. you know what I'm saying? So they're not really trying to teach these kids, like I was trying to tell you before, if they were truly trying to teach the children correctly, they would be giving them life skills that they need. Sure. Like you were saying earlier, if you're looking at your mortgage and stuff like that, they should be teaching kids how to handle that already. Like, I'm pretty sure back in the day when you were all in school, they were teaching you all how to balance checkbooks and stuff oh, like that. Oh, shit. So, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying, but they don't give these kids these type of skills anymore. No. You know what I'm saying? It should be more things aimed at what is going on in the world today. You know what I'm saying? Like stock market. They don't teach the kids how to invest their yeah. money. They don't teach, they're not teaching them the things that they need. Like I can honestly say probably at least 50% of the stuff that these kids are learning they're not going to use. Right. And you have to really think about, about a lot of the stuff that you learned back in school. Are, are, is, how does it apply today? And I know the times have changed, but a lot of the information that they're given is useless information. If you look at the billionaires in America, even the millionaires, those are the people who are truly prosperous, right? A lot of those people didn't even finish high school. Sure. They, didn't, they definitely didn't go to college because they knew that college, to them, if you listen to them talk online, a lot of those multi-millionaires will tell you college is for chumps because it doesn't do anything but put you in debt. And who does that go, who does that go for? Who is that paying? You know what I'm saying? So. We really need to start looking at the education and system in a different light. And uh, as parents, we really, really need to step up and we need to go to whoever is in charge of all this and tell them that they need to change the curriculum. It's not just about whatever tests or whatever standards they want to push on our children. It's about how we feel and how we want our children to be pushed towards success. Can, can, I, can I just say this? that What our studies are showing now in, in the college level is that there's big problems, real big problems in the future because less schools are now having students coming out to become teachers. They're, 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 not, they're not coming out like, like they did 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago. And they're saying, they're, wait a minute, we don't have the classroom amount of students like we did before. And, and because these kids have seen what some of these teachers have gone through, and, or they just don't want to teach, you know what I mean? There's, a, there, there's problems because now who's going to replace these teachers? And maybe in five or six years they're going to retire or maybe quit, you know, we don't know. And now who's going to replace them? You know, you know a, a studies have shown this that uh, one third to one half of the classes that are being taught in the state of Texas are being taught by teachers that are not certified in their field. Wow. Yeah, and that's sad because what's happening is um, there's such a shortage of teachers. They can't get teachers that they're just trying to get any and everybody, anybody that, hey, can you read and write? Yeah, we can teach English. You know, <laughs> that's, uh, okay, uh, yeah, uh, for, you know, you're not going to get much English out of that, you know, but, uh, but you know, uh, we, you know uh, we're going to have some, uh, some guy that, uh, that maybe knows a little bit about math, teach about chemistry. Well, he may know math but doesn't mean he knows chemistry you know and um, but they said that there's such a desperation of um, teachers even, even the other day I went to I go swimming at Belton High School and I was talking to one of the coaches there uh, swim coaches I said uh, how are y'all doing over there and he goes well we still need teachers you know and uh, this is Belton and, and he said Temple needs them too and and, uh, and uh, he said Clean definitely needs them because they're you know they're dropping out you know they're after about two weeks some of them are just dropping out and uh, and I said well I said, well, that's too bad, you know, and, um, and uh, we talked a little bit, but yeah, uh, the future doesn't look good. And, and uh, I mean, when you're having teachers that are not certified to teach classes, that's not really giving them a full rounded 
topic on the, on the subject matter they're supposed to know. Or in the future, like I said, you know, in colleges, you're, you're not, the teachers are not coming out. They're not going to be teachers. Right. I'm, I'm going to say, say this, uh, and uh, I don't know why it is. I always lose my fucking points. I'm sorry. But I will say this because Maybe I'm talking too much. I don't no, know. No, 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 no. It's not your idea. It's not your job. 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 I still use some of the things that I was taught when I was in school. And I'll just give just a, a small one because it just popped in my mind and I forgot some of the other ones. Uh, they taught me how to sew. I we was in the eighth grade and I learned we, 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 was, we had to make a freaking sweater. It was like trash. Like how to make something. We, we learned how to cook. We learned how to fill out a envelope. When some of the kids now do not know how to fill out it, yeah. yeah. they, they do not know how to put the name here. We were taught those things, and I still use those things today. When the kids graduate today, I don't think they remember or use anything because they're not teaching about finance. We learned about, I learned about a lot of that shit. I know you probably can relate to some of that. Yeah, I, can, I mean, I even when we were in high school, Miss uh, uh, Queen uh, took her class and she taught. Uh, home economics. home economics, economics and stuff like that. You know, we, we learned a lot of that. But, but then just to say, um, I think that it's all like you were saying, and I'm a big believer in it's all about the numbers. Because you know what, I'm giving numbers and shit. I'm giving numbers and stuff. I'm giving numbers. But the numbers are skewed. We know that. But it's all about the numbers. I learned that in one of my jobs when the uh, CEO was talking and he was talking about the numbers. You know, they get to these numbers, they don't get to these numbers, you gotta go. And I say that because I think that that testing system, that star test and all that shit, I, I never was in agreement with it. I don't know how you guys feel that when a kid went to high school and he had his 21 credits or whatever, he graduated. Mm -hmm. but, but now they can't do that. I, don't I, think. I think they have to pass this it's they got to pass that star test. Yeah, test. I mean. Because that's all they teaching is to pass that test. I believe he said something like that a while ago. For the numbers and for the funding, for the money. Sure. You know, so, so really, and, and, and John, this, this podcast is uncut and unedited. Okay. So I'm going to let you know. So oh, you can start when I say, fuck the numbers. Yeah. And I, let's teach our kids. Yeah. But that's just me talking yeah. about it. I'm really, you, we really need to start giving them things that they need to be more aware of. Like, there is no reason why our children shouldn't have a class on credit. Mm -hmm. They should have a class on credit. People, just, people still do not understand credit to this day. You know what I'm saying? I really didn't understand credit until a few years ago because I wasn't fucking with nothing. Like, I literally, when I got, when I got out of high school, all my friends were getting credit cards and they was fucking off. They had all that money. They had to pay all that money back. Every credit card I've gotten still to this day, I cut it up and throw it in the garbage. That's good. I, I don't use it. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? It was at a point where my credit was zero, and that was bad. And I thought, like, man, zero credit got to be good. I mean, my shit not bad. But we weren't taught that. My, my parents didn't teach me about credit. My mom taught me about a lot of different things, and credit wasn't one of them. She taught me how to pay bills and stuff, but credit was. And that's critical in today. Yeah, it is. Very to get anything, you need to know about credit. Yes. Well, I, I'm glad you brought that up, Josh, because uh, there was two, uh, a couple of years ago, there was two NFL former pro bowlers that uh, are, are actually maybe Hall of Famers that uh, talked about uh, finance and credit and, and uh, teaching the younger football players, NFL players about financing and, res and fiscal responsibility. And that was Leonard Marshall, and, and, and uh, who played for the New York Giants, and Art Monk. Mm -hmm. And they were saying, you know, we have to teach this younger uh, NFL players how to how to handle their money, yeah. and, and and realize that it's not just you know money that you just throw away because some of them can be set for life, and yet some of them can be set for only maybe a year, mm -hmm. depending. You know, you hear so many NFL or NBA or, or, or you know major league bas baseball players, you know whatever, you know even movie stars, I guess where they they're, they're rich. And then two or three years later, they're, they're broke, you know, and, and it's sad because, because they're not, you know, he said, we need to teach them. We need to teach them about finance. We need yeah. to teach them about responsibility and, and about how to live a simple life and that you don't need all this entourage and, and all this um, fancy stuff. Right? But, yeah, that's important. That's it's the same thing when you think about the people that uh, win the lottery. 
They tricked that money off. They never taught about any of that stuff. A lot of those, like you were saying, a lot of those sports players, you know what I'm saying, the NFL and the NBA, they don't really even know about taxes, man. No. And they go blowing all this money and they don't know about taxes. And then, you know, you still you start really getting to that mode where we start learning more. So then you start seeing people that donate thousands of dollars or millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Coming to find out they really can write that off and they get that money back. So are they really donating it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like you start to see things differently when you understand the lingo of how that type of stuff works on paper. Yeah. You know, and, and we really need to be taught this stuff because people are really ignorant out here when it comes to that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? You got people putting bills in their children's name fucking off their kids credit at a very young age that's sad. and yeah. that's because yeah. they didn't fuck they shit on so bad yeah. now they don't they can't put a white bill in their name so what they do they take their five girl and then put a white bill in their name yeah not understanding that it's other ways around it see in school if they were to teach you that you can build a trust fund with your family and you can have your own bank account with your family you can have your own bank banking system with your family or let's say you wanted to start up an llc then you can get your own identification number then that can have its own line of credit you don't even have to use your uh line of credit with your social security number people are not taught these things right yeah so if we were given these things in high school or even giving it to us at a younger age so we can therefore build upon it more and understand it the world will be in a lot better place. These children will be in a lot better place. And this is the information that they need that's critical. Mm -hmm. Now to get to what you were saying about the teachers, now we may be losing teachers, but I can clearly see where the future is going when it comes to no teachers, man. Mm -hmm. See, they don't want anybody to be questioning their agendas and the teachers that are yeah. quitting, they're questioning their agendas when it comes to the scores. So what's gonna come next is we have already had to deal with COVID and online teaching. So what do y'all mm -hmm. think is gonna happen next? AI. They're going to put their AI yeah. system right there and not exactly. question anything and teach them the curriculum that they want them to have. Or you basically AI where uh, when you go to, let's say, like uh, Temple High, you, everybody that wants Algebra 1, everybody's going to be taught by this one teacher or one uh, yep. one uh, AI or whatever. And, uh, um, yeah. It's, 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 they may not even have to sit in the classroom, yeah. though. No, they'll be at home. Yeah. yeah. They'll be at home, totally at home. And, 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 and that's not good because... Uh, I, I, you know, the kids need to get out. They need yeah. to interact with the other kids. Skills. They need to work on their social skills. They need to get in sports because, you know, my uncle and I talked about this. If they ever did with just at home schooling, I mean, you know, where you're just at home, some of these kids will never going to play football, basketball. I mean, they're going to sit at home and they're going to gain weight. I mean, it's not going to be good. It's, it's just, it's just, just not going to be good, you know. And, and this way, when you go to school, you get to interact. I mean, some when I, I think back, Paul, when, when we went to school, some of the best times we had was not only learning. <laughs> it's just, yeah. it was, I mean, we learned. I mean, but, yeah. but you yeah. know, it was in between classes. It was the talking, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and, yeah. and, and, and uh, the interacting, you know. And that's yeah. right, right, Josh. And yeah. and, and I. I I'm afraid that's what's what's going to happen is that with the shortage of teachers that they're really going to push for at home and, and uh, AI is going to really take us show us big ugly head and and it's not going to be good. I don't think it's going to be good for the for the future or for the for the next generation or two or three coming up because yeah. that's not good. You can barely tell what's real now with it when because it comes to AI and all these pictures they have online of people like. They got some pictures of circling laying around with Steve Harvey drinking and going crazy. Like, yeah, yeah. You can't even tell that it's not real, man, if you don't have that eye to see it. Yeah. So it really is saying a lot when it comes to our future of the education of our children, man. It leads to a whole different level of indoctrination. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And what they can believe is true. And that's all I was telling you the other day. It only takes two generations. You know, and if they have AI teaching you, it's going to get even wilder because you don't know what they're going to be programming our kids to to know or have in their heads. You know what I mean? Uh, they got this whole chip thing that they're pushing. They can easily be pushing that in our children's head when it comes to the AI and how they're, how they're already having it in the school systems and stuff like that. Like, they already got metal detectors and all this other crazy stuff. And the, these schools are really ran like prisons. Yeah, I'm yeah. from Chicago, and we got metal detectors in every high school. It, it's, it's a shame that you have to go to a school like, you know, for instance, Temple, which is a midtown city. I call Temple Midtown because it's, what, 80,000? Yeah, it's not yeah, It's not yeah. a big, big city like Houston. Or, but, but you know, you got to have you got to have police. Our, 
yet to have police officers that are not working on their days off to come over there, and, and, and that's and that's not good. I mean, that's that's sad right. when when you have to see that, and um, um, you know, it's just you know that. Right. The, 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 the biggest concern I have is that we're losing good teachers and we're losing, the, I'm afraid, the interaction of being around good teachers. Mm -hmm. And and uh, you're having to fill in these teachers with somebody that's, you know, that just maybe two years ago was just walking the streets. And, and I'm not, not sitting there and say, you know, that there's, I'm not putting that person down, but, you know, there's no incentive to be a teacher. And, um, you know, and, just uh, I wish there was a. Uh, we need to cut back on on the excessive spending up on top, and and give our teachers more money because, because like I said, I, I challenge anybody to find out what our superintendent did here at this local school district, what he did all day, and I guarantee you, you probably find out he probably didn't do but maybe two or three hours worth of work at most. Yeah, getting paid. And, and, and I'm just saying because. Yeah. I'm, 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 and I don't mean to go off on subject, but a friend of mine, uh, uh, his wife, his wife was a was a school teacher, junior high, and uh, she had enough of it after because junior high, oh boy, you know, junior high teaching. But uh, um, anyway, she became a teacher. Anyway, she got tired of it, so she got her de master's degree in uh, mid management, and she told me, she said, John, I'll never have to teach again. She goes, I'm going to be uh, some kind of curriculum director or something. And she said she loves it. It's it's easy. It, it's, it's 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 very little work. And I'm just like that. That's the problem. Yep. And they're paying these people more to do nothing yep. than the teachers that are out there going out there. It's kind of like Vietnam. <laughs> the Vietnam, the, the, the troops were out there getting you know uh, guerrilla warfare on, you know uh, booby traps on by the generals, and, and they were telling how bad the conditions were. And, and yet the generals at home were saying how good it was, but they were at home. You know, they were in their, in their, yeah, yeah, I was about to say that. Yeah, yeah. they were, you know, they didn't really they know themselves. In the and and yeah. my deal is, as, as I said before, let some of these, let some of these administrators put them back in the classroom. Wow. You, what you'll find out, Josh, Paul, is that you find out that they're not very good teachers. They're not. They're, they're not, not very good teachers. Right. They talk a lot. They want you to believe something, but they're paid good money to talk. And then and that's what is, and that's what hurts. It, it's one thing to talk and back it up, but it's one thing to talk when you can't back it up, right. and, and that's what hurts, you know. And, and it's showing in our school systems. And and uh, like I said, if you look at what our, what these uh, administrations did, did today, and we'll just use any day, and you'll find out it's it's not it's a teacher will do more in one period than what they'll do all day. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Well, I tell you this also that one of the reasons, in my opinion, first of all, I say that is. I think Temple High is overcrowded. I think it was back when we was there in the summer in the 80s, somewhere up in there. Now they've expanded it, but you have a town like Belton that's smaller than Temple and has two high schools or three, I don't know. Colleen is bigger, so they have probably like six high schools, whatever. But Temple, one of the things I'll say about the money and the funding, if they would stop spending it on Wildcat Stadium, another swimming pool that you informed me of that yeah. they just built rebuilt yeah. because they let the other one go yeah. now, i know you have to upgrade some of those facilities and all that stuff but come on man look at the teachers where are they they're in the trenches should be reaping that reward than this uh 10 million dollar stadium i think some college some high school shit, i don't know where it was i wasn't prepared for this has a ten or thirty million dollar football stadium. Uh, some of them, one in Melissa, Texas, is eighty four million dollars. Eighty four million dollars. I mean, you know, uh, Allen Allen built one in, uh, a couple years ago for what sixty million, I believe. Allen and uh, McKinney was another one built one. You know, they're they're nice stadiums, no doubt about it. They're nice stadiums, but uh, has taken a lot of money to build those stadiums, and, and it's just a stadium, you know, and it's only being used about what ten weeks out of the year. <laughs> yeah, and I like to know what those teachers' salary. You know, those teachers being paid because you didn't just spend this money to upgrade that. And the last thing I'll touch uh, before you say something else is that I talked about free lunches for the kids in one of the other podcasts. And I think I saw somewhere Temple has gotten it, but it's long overdue, it's long past due mm -hmm. to be feeding those kids 
they should have been eating a long time ago. Do you know the pressure it is for that kid to go through the line and get a fucking peanut butter and jelly sandwich while everybody else is over here eating? And so now they're laughing at that child. But yet back then, they were spending millions of dollars on football because down south, football is the shit. Yeah. But. Go ahead. I think that <laughs> down, down here, uh, I think America truly has a problem, and mm -hmm. I know this is gonna sound weird because coming from a man, I don't know, I don't watch sports. I understand that sports are a distraction from what's truly going on, and that goes on back to Rome and Colosseums that they use these things as distractions. So I feel like it's just a distraction for our children to have this type of stuff. I do understand the uh, importance of exercising and getting out there, understanding the body and all that. But it's a very big distraction, especially out here, that how much emphasis they put on their children to have a sports career mm -hmm. as opposed to them really being more intellectual. And I really think that tears down a lot of the youth because they're so focused on just, oh, man, I can make it to the NFL or I can make it to the NBA. And, man, people had those type of pipe dreams back in the day. Everybody can't make it. This is a small number, a, small, a very small percentage of people. And I think you touched on it before, mm -hmm. of people who make it to the big leagues. So I really think they shouldn't even be focusing on that type of stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? It's more important things that we can be guiding our youth to teach them correctly so they can be solving major problems on this planet other than catching a ball and running into the end of, a, of another court, man. You know what I'm yeah, saying? They should sure. be teaching them more about law. If they want to, if you want to, if you want to teach them anything about something on the court, Teach them about law. Sure. That's a very important sport they need to know how to play because that's a very dangerous game, man. You know what I'm saying? And they out here just pushing sports. You have to look at look at the difference between the curriculum in a public school and the curriculum in a private school. And it's a big difference. Sure. And when you look at that, but what is, what makes that difference, though? It's money. Where is the money going? How are they funding? See, in private schools, when you're funding something, you know exactly what you're funding. And they have a say-so. In public schools, it's not like that, though. It's about you the numbers. It, it, yeah, it's, it's about uh, distractions and, and uh, corruption. And Josh, I just wanted to tell you that you're, 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 you hit the nail on the head, you know. Uh, sports is, you know, we make sports number one. And, and unfortunately, we have kids and uh, they may not know how to read and write. They may not know how to tell time. But they know everything about this particular football player, know where he's from, and knows what is every every yard he's had, you know, and, and whatever, how many hits he's had, and, and 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 somewhere down the line, you have to sit there and say, what's is that really what's important, you know? Uh, you I mean, know it's I mean, cool to have people to look up to, sure. But how is this solving any major problem on our planet? Uh, from you know, what I'm understanding, every generation is born to solve a problem from the previous generation. We could have had kids out here that were born to already understand how to solve the problem of world hunger. And, and that's something that we shouldn't even be going through anymore as far as technology has come. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. we, we could have had children out here born to solve the problem of homelessness. You know what I'm saying? They, and they out here 3D printing houses. You yeah, know what I mean? So it's just interesting that we are taking our youth and we're putting their mind towards things that they don't even need to be thinking about, man. You know what I'm saying? They can do it. But at the same time, if you really pay attention to a lot of these NFL players, man, they getting out there, they playing the game, they getting paid, and then they what they doing with that money? Okay. They taking their ass back to college, learning more things. They understand it because they understand that they lost out on an opportunity to learn more. And you don't necessarily have to go to college to learn more, but because they weren't taught how to think properly when they were younger. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these people are getting brain damaged playing these sports, man. Sure. And we're not teaching our youth that. We're just teaching them an image and money. Mm -hmm. And that's what's God in our society is money is so corrupted. When we really need to be teaching our children how to solve these problems, how to be more compassionate towards other people. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we at one point, we found more value in kids saying the Pledge of Allegiance than we did when we was actually teaching them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's all about brainwashing and corruption. Like you guys are saying, it's the, it's the money is just flowing. Everything. And like you said, Josh, it, it's about like the, back in the Roman days, about the charity races. You keep them entertained. Yep. You know, therefore, they don't think. You know, as long as you keep them narrow-minded, they won't expand and they won't think, you know. Teaching them finance, teach them, like you said, about the stock market. You may teach, you may prevent somebody from going homeless. You may be teaching somebody, you know, you don't know, uh, but those, those, are, those are more important things than uh, teaching them, uh, you know, about other things that's irrelevant, you know. But, uh, but you know, uh, Josh, you brought up the private schools. Mm -hmm. And, you know, right now, you know, they talk about the school choice. 
and to send money from the public schools to the private schools, you know, to help. So the money that the state or whatever is given to send my child to the public school, they said that I should have a choice to send them to the private school. So I don't know if you guys have been following that a little bit, but let's try to see what, what are y'all thoughts on, on this school choice? Well, I'm all for it. I'll be honest with you, Paul. I'm all for school choice. I, I don't have a problem with that per se. Um, you know, if, if, if I have a child and I don't have, have any kids, but if I want to send them to a, a school that I think is, is going to be beneficial more, I mean, I, I, I can see both ways, to be honest with you, because the, the problem is, is that, yeah, you want to send your child to, to, to a better school. Okay, obviously, every parent wants to do that. But the problem is, is that you start you start making some schools better than others, and you're going to start putting the ones that uh, the people are not so likely to go to, and you're going to start putting it down. So I, I do have a um, I do have a I, I said I was for it, but yet I'm, I'm really not for it at the same time either. I, I, I guess the, the main reason the main reason I, I like to to have it a. a you know, just a, a well-rounded system, you know, where everything's equal. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I really don't yeah. really uh, want where, where one school is better than the other because that's not what school system is about, to, to make one school, okay, Temple's better than Bell, Bell's better than Temple, Temple's better clean, clean. You know, I don't want, you know, that's not what it's designed about, you know. It's designed about getting teachers to, to, to teach you know, to teach and everybody, you know, to learn and learn trade and, and, and learn how to interact and, and just be kids again. Right. Yeah. Well, you know and, that they are, uh, they, they're trying, that's what they're trying to do is they want to take, just trying to be clear. So, you know, they want to take the public fund money that the state, I say the state or government, whoever is giving to the school. Cause we were talking about the numbers earlier, you know, and about being about the money. So the public school don't want to lose that money for that kid yeah. because if he goes to that private school, then they lost that money. So think about the parents that are pulling the kids out and put them into this private school, but and now they'll be getting that money from probably from the state or from the governor yeah. or something like that. So some of them, I mean, right now they're going into a court, I mean, a court battle with that and all that. And then just to touch on... Uh, I, I'll be honest with you, I don't mean to interrupt, but I, I probably have mixed emotions about that. I said I was a favorite one, but I'll probably be honest with you, I probably got mixed emotions. I, I, I don't... In some ways I, I, I like it, in a lot of ways I don't, you know. Right. And, and I just, uh, okay. I really didn't think about it before I talked, you know. But right. I just want to correct myself on that because, like I said, I don't know if I really... I see a problem there in which some schools are going to be really successful you know, and really going to be having outstanding teachers and really going to be, and I mean, you have a problem there and then you're going to have some schools that are really going to be in the dumps and that's not... That's not I mean, really what the education is. It's really the beginning about. stages of classism, if you really yes, think about Yes, exactly. It. Um, just the way some people look at certain prestigious colleges as opposed to people who go to community colleges, it really shouldn't be that way. Uh, your education should be uh, balanced all around the board. Everybody should be getting the same information. Um, and But mm -hmm. it's not like that, unfortunately, because money always talks more. Mm -hmm. So I guess the more you're willing to pay, the better quality of teaching you're going to get when everybody should be receiving the same information so that we can go forth and make a better planet. But Josh, I don't mean to interrupt, but, but going back to the school system, do you really think these administrators, I mean, I mean, I don't mean to hit hard on them, but I'm going to hit hard. They are. Do, do, do you really think they care about the kids? No. I don't think so either. It's about money. Everything is about it's, it's, money. It's, 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 I really don't. And then that's the problem is that money has ruined things. And we'll always continue. As long as you have money in the school systems, and I'm talking about a vast amount of money, you're going to ruin the school systems. But that's and, anything, though. Yeah, that's anything. Companies, and that's, these jobs, exactly. all these businesses are exactly what they could. These corporations are going to be run like that. America, I remember, I remember when you could look at things, because I wasn't alive back then when I'm talking about this now, but I remember just listening to people talk about it, seeing it in films and documentaries. America didn't used to be run like a corporation. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now it is. And it is. everything that's tied to America is run like a corporation. So we got to get out of that mode. You know what I'm saying? Our children are not businesses. You know what I'm saying? The in-law, the definition of a person is a corporation. 
You know what I'm saying? Our children are not persons in law. You know what I'm saying? We have to treat them like human beings, man. Mm -hmm. We have to treat them like somebody that we want to see go forth and make the world a better place. And that should be ultimately the goal. Like when I came here, I was uh, doing this one time where we were waxing floors, right? And we went out to this high school way out in the country somewhere, man. I'm talking about the it was so the town was so small. Our high school and the elementary school was literally next door. You could walk from one to the other right across. And it's like, man, I was looking at some of the curriculum in their books on our break. I'm like, damn. Out here, the kids can learn about irrigation, livestock, kind of all that. They're learning a trade. But why are they not teaching the kids this in the city? I feel like it's just as important for us to um, understand and respect life on all levels. We all should be learning the same thing. Like me, I made a transition from the city and I came out here to the country. How did they know when I was a child, I wouldn't want to know about livestock and uh, raising animals and stuff like that, though? You know what I mean? Well, let me ask y'all this. I mean, who sets or how is it set? What is the standard set? Is it set by Congress? Is it set by the state as to what our kids learn? It's, uh, I've been a school teacher for six years. Uh, uh, is it set by, again, by an organization that should not even be in existence? And that's the Texas Education Agency. Because, again, it's a bureaucracy, and you find out that some of the people in the Texas Education Agency have no business whatsoever even stepping in foot just taking one step into a school because they don't really care about the kids. They're hiding out. They're hiding out. They want the money and they act big talk and they create actually more harm than good. And, and yeah, they're the ones that, that, that supposedly set, set the, uh, I guess, the, the, the curriculum and, and then they pass it on down to the school districts and then the school districts make adjustments. And uh, I mean, I, I'm not really 100%. Uh, you know, um, you know, but yes, sure on that, yes, but, but I, I'm probably, yeah. I'm probably not too far from it. But uh, the Texas Education Agency and any agency, basically, regardless if it's in Minnesota or uh, Washington, if it's in uh, Louisiana, uh, should not even have that because basically teaching, and your mom will tell you this too, should be local. It should be local, and it should be basically run by the teachers and, 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 and the parents, and, and, and uh, it should be the state local. Not have the state, the Austin, which is the state of Texas, call the shots and, and have some person that barely can read and write be claimed that they're a Texas agent, education agency agent because they went and got so many years of schooling, and the only reason they got the extra years of schooling was because they didn't want to deal with the kids. And, and, and a lot of them, Josh and Paul, I'm going to be honest with you, they don't like kids. <laughs> they, don't, they don't like kids. I'll be honest with you. They, they hate kids. They don't want to be around them. They leave me alone, kid. Go get rid of your teacher. You know, that they don't want to, you know. But, you know and, but here's the thing I've always said every school administrator needs to teach at least a half a day of core classes, not underwater weaving, not, 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 not theater arts and all that, but I'm talking about math, science, English, arithmetic, you know, well, arithmetic, math, science, right. uh, social studies, I forget, the math and arithmetic, the same. But, but teaching core classes with average amount of kids, not sit there and say, I teach English and I only have two students. No, come on. That's not being fair. You know, anybody can teach two students. I mean, you know, but when you have average, uh, uh, you know, we got 20 kids in each class, and you're teaching three days because basically it comes down, down to this. What did they do today, those, 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 uh, 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 those administrators? Did they do more harm than good? Possibly. I think they did today. I mean, but they need to, uh, you know, yeah. Well, we'll I hope I'm going too hard. hard. No, no, no. You, <laughs> hey, hey, this is what we're talking about. You, you let that shit flow. You know, so what we're going to do, we're talking about the school system. So, Josh, we're getting close in on the hour, so I'm going to let you go on and see any closing. Something you want to leave on everybody's mind. Then I'm going to come back and see what anything you have to say, and then I'm going to close it on up out here. Mm -hmm. well, like I was saying in the beginning, man, I just want to circle back on that. I really think that these schools should really use the science that's at hand, right? And really go back to the fundamentals of teaching. There are many teaching styles and teaching methods that they are not applying. Everybody is not a visual learner. Some children need their hands-on learning. Sure. So they need to take some of these public schools, right, and form them. 
But they need to have at least three different schools where the kids can learn three different ways. And each kid that learn that way, they need to be sending those kids to that school so they can get the most out of their education systems. And they really need to bring back apprenticeships. Some people are meant for those type of trades. They want to learn certain things at a certain age and carry it forward, bro. And it's a, that's a big problem with America now. The reason why we don't make anything is because we're not teaching our kids to be creators and to make things on a physical level. We're only teaching them to make stuff digitally or be coders or programmers. And we really need to bring back wood carving, shop classes, sure. home eggs. Like you said, sewing. Yeah, yeah. People need to know these skills. They need to have these skills to go forth to be complete people. Right. And I really feel like the school should dive into that because that's true research so that these kids can know that you're not crazy. Just because you're not learning one way doesn't make you stupid. Everybody's not a visual learner. You got to some, some, some kids that need you to get your hands in there with them. You know what I mean? And, and those type of kids, sometimes you only got to show them once. But they're not using the science and the information shown that there are different learning styles. And we really need to get back to that. That's why I absolutely agree with that. I agree with that too, Josh. And I think you made some good points. And I just want to say it was a pleasure to work to be here with you. And you you, you hit the nail on the head on everything. And, um, you know, my final point would be that, uh, uh, you know, uh, just ask, ask yourself, like I said, when you get your tax statements, uh, your property taxes, how, how many where it's going to the schools, are we getting more bang for a buck or are people taking advantage of it? And, uh, you know, just drive by your school administration and see how many cars are there, see what's really being done. Find out, you know, that, you know, really, is this all necessary, you know? Um, not, not, you know, not really. You know, in my opinion, it's not. And I've, I've seen it firsthand. And uh, just, uh, you know, we, uh, Josh, you did a good job. You hit the nail. Every, everything, everything you said was was correct. And uh, and uh, I can't say anything more. All right, well, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, and um, I wanted to say on that. Uh, you know, TA, teacher education, agency. agency. I, I guess, guess we can almost say they're like the superintendents also that ain't doing shit, just have a job, just getting paid. I, mean, I, I, I wish y'all thought we thought about looking up, see when they even form, when they organize, whatever it costs. I mean, you know, 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 yeah, they're not doing anything. All right, guys, y'all get there. I'll tell you this right here on the last note. Back when we were in school, I mean, we learned how to thread a needle, how to, how to thread a bobbin <laughs> with a sewing machine. Yeah, and, and we learned, all this, I see what I do today. I, if my pins grip, I know how to fucking sew them up. You know, I kids just learned that. <laughs> <laughs> we we learned that in school. I just you learned that, man. So they're not really teaching. It's, it's about the numbers. numbers. It's about this test. And, and you know, now we, we know how people are talking about the school choice situation got to come up. So we touched on some key points. How all that will uh, come to pass or whatever. I don't know what it might take. A lot of us coming together. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, or whatever. I don't know that. I will say this also that. I believe I saw on the news here a while back that Midway was uh, teachers as in some of the top, they received some award for being the top uh, teachers or something. And what they doing that some of the others will do, I don't know. I'm just pointing that out that they was up in some of the top notch and maybe all of theirs went to school and didn't get, uh, like you were saying, some of them now don't even have to get certified or whatever in the course that they teaching. But I don't know, that's a whole lot, guys. We can cover and cover and cover. I only like to run it for about an hour. We almost right there at it. Yeah. Um, Been a pleasure, Paul. I, I, I really appreciate you coming on, John. Y'all, I will tell you this, and I didn't tell you, but John used to block for me back in oh, football. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we played football. He, he no. and his brother used to block for me back in the day. Yeah. You know, and we, and we had this one trick play that only his brother knew, and his brother was the center. And we were punting, and I was the short man behind the deal. And it was, I don't know how many yards we needed for the first down, but we were supposed to punt. And 
His brother snapped the ball to me. Well, shit, I was like, Forrest Gump. I just ran. <laughs> <laughs> we got the first down and shit. Yeah. Nobody knew what was going on but his brother. Yeah. The center. I, I was downfield ready to receive, you know, tackle the punter. And next thing I look back and Paul's behind me. And I'm like, well, what, did, well, what are you doing back here, Paul? I said, you know, they call it fake pun. I didn't know they called it the fake pun. Nobody knew that. And then I say this the last day before we close. Because even his brother. <laughs> you know, you play guard. Yes. And his brother was the center. Yes. So we could not go on three for nothing in the world with oh, them two. No. Because, you know, Huck went up two or three. Mm -hmm. And one of them would nerd the other say it's on three. And one of them would jump or his brother would snap the damn ball. <laughs> it was just the funnest thing, man. This, this, I've been knowing this guy for 30 some years. And uh, He's been cool. I see him in the gym, the outstanding guy. So I really appreciate you coming on Wizzle Talk. Thank you. You know, bro. he already didn't sign the banner. And we have another topic because Josh is another one that can yeah. talk about multiple things. And yeah, I know yeah. you got into politics and stuff too. Like I said, so, thank you, Paul. Thank yeah. you, Josh. And so, uh, I really I'm, enjoyed it. And right. it was fun. Right. And uh, my man, Josh, I can't say enough about him. He's my go to guy, you know. And uh, he's always ready to come on Wizzle Talk. Oh, so I appreciate you. it. And always glad to have you here. Sorry. And you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. Like, I didn't even run a damn commercial. No commercial. I thought we was going. Good. It was so good, I forgot to run a commercial. But everybody, anyway, I'm going to thank everybody for watching Wizzle Talk. Always remember that it is absolutely free to like, share, and subscribe. Shapar Paul Wizzle. I'll let you boy.